All right, longest increasing subsequence. Um, so we got to go over patient sorting first so that you can understand how to do this problem. Um, so yeah, let's do that. All right, I'm going to go over patient sorting and how to find the longest increasing subsequence. So let's say I have an array of numbers here. So I have 7, 10, 6, and a bunch of other numbers in my array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first number, and I'm going to put it in a pile. So this is just a pile, and I'm putting 7 in it. Okay. And when I take this next number 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the tops of my current piles, which right now I only have a pile of size 1, which is 7. So the top of the pile is 7 here so far. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask myself, is 10 less than or equal to 7 here? It's not. So because it's greater, I'm going to create a new pile. I'm going to put 10 in it. And then I'm going to draw an edge from 10 to 7. Now, what does this mean? This means that this is my current longest increasing subsequence from 10 to 7. Or in this, the edges are technically backwards, but if we were to say traverse that these edges, so from 10 to 7, and then do the reverse, that would be our longest increasing subsequence. So you can see that 7 and 10 so far is our longest increasing subsequence. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the 6, and I'm going to find, I'm going to look at the tops of the current piles, so the top of the, these piles are 7 and 10, and I'm going to find the first element that 6 is less than or equal to. Well, 6 is less than or equal to the 7, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 6 at the top of this pile. Okay, now I'm going to get to this 8, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the tops of these piles, and I'm going to compare 8 to 6. Is 8 less than or equal to 6? It's not, okay? Is 8 less than or equal to 10? It is. Then uh, that means that 8 goes at the top of this pile. And then 8 is going to get an edge drawn to the, the top of the previous pile. So the previous pile is here. The top element is 6. So we're going to draw an edge from 8 to 6. So it's just we're just drawing an edge from the from our 8 to the top of the previous pile. And this represents another increasing subsequence. So if you notice, if we go from 8 to 6 and then do the reverse, which would be 6, 8, 6, 8 is an increasing subsequence in this array. Okay. Now we take, we're at the number 9 now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the top elements of these piles. And I'm going to ask myself, is 9 less than or equal to 6? It's not. Is 9 less than or equal to 8? It's not. Okay. Therefore, I have to create a new pile. Okay, so 9 goes in my pile, and I'm going to draw an edge to the top of my previous pile. The top of my previous pile is just 8. Now I draw an edge. Cool. And if I were to traverse these edges, it would be 9, 8, 6. And notice that the reverse of that, 6, 8, 9, 6, 8, 9, is our current longest increasing subsequence. Okay, so now I'm going to get to this other 9. And again, I look at the top elements, and I'm asking myself, is 9 less than or equal to 6? Is 9 less than or equal to 8? No, is 9 less than or equal to 9? Yes. So I'm going to draw this 9 at the top of this pile. And then I'm going to draw an edge to the top of the previous pile, which means we have another longest increasing subsequence. So again, 9, 8, 6, 6, 8, and then this 9 here. OK. And now I'm at this 3. I'm going to look at the tops of the piles. Is 3 less than or equal to 6? It is. So I'm going to draw 3 at the top of this pile here. And then I'm going to take this 18, and 18 is not less than or equal to 3, it's not less than or equal to 8, it's not less than or equal to 9, so I have to create another pile. And then I draw an edge to the top of the previous pile. Okay, so this means that my longest increasing subsequence is actually 6, 8, 9, 18. Okay, so if you notice, the number of piles is actually the length of the longest increasing subsequence. So we have four piles here, and if you notice, we have 6, 8, 9, 18. Our longest increasing subsequence is of size 4. So we only actually care about what the number of piles is in, in terms of the leak code problem. We don't, because it doesn't actually ask us to find the actual numbers in the increasing subsequence. Therefore, we can, we don't actually care about, we don't care to maintain all the numbers that came like underneath the piles like that are like below the top element so as long as we just keep maintaining the tops of the piles uh we'll eventually uh have the correct number of piles once we've inserted all these elements into it okay and we don't actually even care about the edges either like we don't need to know that we would only need the edges at the very if we were actually looking for the the actual numbers in the longest increasing subsequence then we would care about the edges but we don't care about finding the numbers so 
we don't need to keep any edges. We just need to keep the appropriate numbers at the top of the piles. And then the number of piles at the end will be the length of the longest increasing subsequence. Okay. Um, oh, we don't need to care about this guy. Okay. And notice that this, so if we were only keeping track of the tops of the pile, so in this case, it would have been three, eight, nine, eighteen. These numbers are not the actual numbers in the longest increasing subsequence. I want to make that clear. This is, if we do it like this, where we don't keep track of anything, then no, the numbers at the tops of the piles do not represent the longest increasing subsequence. They just the, just the number of piles represents the length of it. Okay, because if you notice this three, like this three here is came before the nine, and look, three is all the way after the nine, so, after both nines. So uh, this couldn't possibly be the longest increasing subsequence. But anyway, so I think we're good to just code it out. Um, so yeah, let's just do it. All right, let's code it. So first thing we're gonna do is create a list of integers, call it piles equals new array list, and this is going to represent, let me fix that. This is going to represent the top element of every pile. Okay. And now we just need to loop through all of our numbers and add it into our piles. And we need to know which pile to add it to, right? Now, what was our basic rule? For when we go through these numbers, we want to find the first pile that the number is less than or equal to. And we add it to that pile. And if there is no such pile, we just create a new pile. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to binary search for the correct pile. So we're going to do int index equals collections dot binary search, pass in the piles, pass in the number, pass in the comparator, a comma b, and so just be a minus b. Cool. And we could do integer. So right here we could do integer dot compare a comma b, but I just like a minus b because it's short. All right. So this will get so binary Java's binary search is a little weird. So if it finds the number in our list of piles, it's going to return the index of that pile. But if it doesn't find that number in our list of piles, what it's actually going to do is going to return where to insert that number. So let me just go through a really quick example. So let's say our piles consisted of the numbers five and the number seven. So this would be index zero, and this would be index one, right? Okay. Well, let's say that I was binary searching. So I was binary searching for six. Well, six isn't in here, right? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to return the place I would insert six. Well, the place I would insert six is at index one here, because you can see that six would come before the seven. So, uh, and notice that this is actually the index of the first element that my number is less than or equal to. Uh, so that's, I think that's just really cool. So we could do, um, so anyway, let me explain the format that it returns it in. Um, so the insertion point, the way it returns it, it's going to do the, it's going to do negative of the insertion point. So like for example, it would be like negative one, but then they do, they subtract one on top of that. So uh, this, in, so if, it, if we were supposed to insert it at index one, this method binary search is actually going to return negative two. Um, so the way that we like undo this, and the, the whole idea behind it is that if, when binary search returns a negative number, that just tells us that the number wasn't found but it's also giving us a little bit more information by telling us like, oh, this, we could also insert it at this index. Um, hopefully that's a little clear, but anyway, we got to undo this. So like if the index is less than zero, then we're going to say index equals um, index plus one, and then just do negative of that. So if this say this was negative two, negative two plus one would give us negative one, and then the negative of negative one would be positive one. Which is, so we're just extracting out, we're just undoing this uh, this little clever math that they do to get the insertion point back. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, now we need to, let's see, what do we want to do next? Oh, so now we check, okay, what if the index that we need to insert it at is like the very end, right? Like if we want it, let's say, so in the beginning our piles is empty. So this index will actually be zero. So what we're gonna say is, if the index equals um, the size of the pile, the size of the piles, then we'll do piles dot add number. So we're just creating a new pile because there was no pile that was less than or equal, or there was no pile where our number was less than or equal to it. Okay. So uh, now we need to, oh, otherwise, um, we can just do piles dot set. So we're just, we're just going to add the, we're going to insert this at the top of the pile, or we're going to essentially replace whatever number is currently in that pile with our number. 
So this will be set the index with the number. Okay, cool. And at the very end, we can just return piles.size. I think we're done. Let's just run it. Oh, I didn't take this out. Okay, run it again. Cool, submit it. All right, so that's how you do this problem using patient sorting. Uh, if this video was helpful, you can give it a thumbs up or you can subscribe if you want. Cool, bye.